Hi, in this video I'm going to do a few examples of simplifying expressions with the distributive property. Um, and I've chosen examples that have a lot of negatives in them because I find that um, a bunch of negatives or subtractions can be a thing that confuses students. So I don't always say this, but um, in some of these questions I'm going to do them a long way where I write out a long series of steps. Um, and in this case, if you can do it without doing all those steps, I think that's actually a good thing. Uh, sometimes I really insist that my students write everything down, but in this case, I would not do that. So in a previous video, I did a bunch of distributive um, property questions with algebra tiles, which I think is a really nice visual for understanding what's happening. But I find that if we're multiplying um, a binomial by a negative number, the algebra tiles cause more of a headache than they are a help. So I don't really necessarily use them if I'm multiplying a binomial by a negative. All right, let's get, final, get started here. Here we have negative 6, and the negative 6 is multiplying a plus 2, this whole quantity in here. And one way we can sort of imagine using the distributive property is taking this negative 6, and I often draw a little curvy lines, negative 6 times a, and negative 6 times 2. Um, so negative 6 times a is negative 6a, and negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. And negative 6a plus negative 12, to have it, the answer be as simple as possible, um, it's easier if we write that plus negative 12 as just subtract 12. So, sorry about that. I'm going to use several times this property that subtracting something is just the same as adding the opposite. So subtracting 12 is the same as adding negative 12. All right, the next couple questions I'm going to do twice. Um, I'd like to show you that they're the same. I'd like you to choose the method that works better for you. I don't think this is a case where you really need to be able to do both methods. In fact, if you can do um, sort of a shorter way, that's great. So we've got negative 3, and we're multiplying negative 3 by 5 subtract x. So we'll the first way here. So we can say that that's negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And then we're subtracting, because it's subtraction, negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x. So this is great. So far it's not finished yet, though, because it's not very simple. It's easier... Let's this subtracting negative 3x. Subtracting is the same as adding the opposite, so that would be the same as adding positive 3x, and that's a simpler thing to write. Plus 3x. And then the last thing here, this is just a convention, which just means a bunch of people agree to do it, so that everybody's answers look the same, or everybody's work looks the same. If we have a negative and we're adding to a positive, often we'll just switch the order up so that the positive is first. So I have a positive 3x, and uh, I'm adding a negative 15, or you can think of that as subtracting. All right, I'm going to explain this a different way. If you like it, this method, choose this method. If you like the other one, choose the other. So I'll just copy it down again first. Negative 3 times 5 subtract x. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this subtracting as adding the opposite. So negative 3 times 5 plus negative x. Right now, I will use the distributive property: negative three times five, negative fifteen. Negative three. Oh, sorry, and that's going to be adding. Negative three times negative x is positive three x. I didn't need to write that plus sign. You don't need to write it if you don't want to. And now we're at uh, this step here. But I'll just rewrite it by convention, because people agree that it's nice. I'll put the positive term in front. So 3x 
And then negative 15 is the same as subtracting 15. If you're comfortable with it, and you can go just sort of imagine multiplying this and um, negative 3 times a negative x, and you're not too confused about whether it's a subtracting or a negative, you can go right to here in one step. That's totally fine. I really made this video for the people who find that confusing because of the distinction between uh, adding a negative and subtracting a positive. But because they're equivalent, because they give us uh, always the same answer, um, we can switch back and forth as much as we want. All right, I'll do one extra example over here. Again, I'm going to do this one two ways. Um, so the first way I'll just consider it as subtraction. So we've got 2 times negative 8 subtract m. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. And then we'll be subtracting. And 2 times m is positive 2m. So the other way, this one is going to be a touch longer, but you wouldn't necessarily know it was longer before you started it. First of all, I'll just copy the question. And now I'll do what I did here, where I rewrote the subtraction as adding a the opposite. So I have negative 8 plus negative m, because these mean the same thing. So negative 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, plus 2 times negative m is negative 2m. Maybe it's nicer in brackets like that. And now I'm going to write the just to make it as simple as possible, adding a negative is just the same as subtracting the positive. So negative 16, subtract 2m. So sometimes one way will be a little bit quicker, and sometimes the other way will be. And again, if you can just go for straight from the expression to the answer without worrying about the steps in between, um, that's totally fine. Uh, the goal is to get from each of these expressions to the answer to the simplified version and to be able to be kind of confident about how and why it works. All right, thanks a lot.